Hello, my name is Jacob Delgado. I am a principal engineer at Aspen Mesh, who has been working in open source for the past two years. I am a co-lead of the Product Security Working Group and the Environments Working Group. And today we will be discussing a beginner's guide to following Istio's security best practices. So what is the purpose of today's talk? Many users, newcomers, and experienced are using many of the default values installed with Istio, whether they're using Helm or they're using Istio CTL. And many of these default values are not as strict as they can be to ensure a secure, or at least what I would consider a secure environment. Some of the reasons though, why these settings are not the default settings for our users are largely related to things like legacy reasons, migration issues, how do we onboard new users to an already complex system, and just the underlying belief that there is no one size fits all security posture that will satisfy the smallest startup to the largest enterprise. Many of these settings that I'll be discussing about all are documented on the Istio.io website and a link is provided in the slides below. Because some of these topics may be opinionated and maybe even controversial among some of the members, uh, I just marked the ones that I consider uh, strongly with an asterisk. Now let's make this clear. This is not meant to be a comprehensive guide. Istio, Kubernetes, and other cloud native solutions are all very sophisticated pieces of software. But I think there's a couple of guidelines that I would like to impart on you. Let's actually prefer to be explicit rather than implicit and not, and let's not rely on, on auto capable features within Istio. As I said before though, IT security practices will vary from company to company, whether it's for compliance, monitoring, or auditing um, reasons. Please ensure that everything that you do follow fits within those guidelines for your company. And lastly, do not adopt any of these settings without testing and validating them before going live into production. You may experience outages if you just go and blindly put these and enable these within your cluster. So what is a common misconception that some users have with Istio? Some users of Istio believe that MTLS is the default traffic pattern within the service mesh. And technically it is. Auto MTLS is actually a feature used within Istio that attempts to negotiate MTLS communication between your sidecars by default. However, Given what I previously said, I believe it's better to be explicit than implicit. So let's make this explicit. And how would we do that? We would make a peer authentication resource set to strict and a destination role set to strict, both within your Istio system namespace. One other thing to consider is disabling the auto MTLS feature within your service mesh. But Given both the peer authentication and the destination rule setting that you see on your screen, it is fine to leave that auto capability still enabled. Even within TCP though, there are still some ports such as 22, which, which is used for SSH, is not actually captured. There are other things that the user can specify with annotations, uh, as well as ports that are actually used by the sidecar that are not intercepted for traffic routing. Within an IPv4 cluster, IPv6 traffic can actually escape and that traffic is not intercepted. And for dual stack clusters, only IPv4 traffic amongst your sidecars is intercepted, but not IPv6. There's some nuance there and, and, and you can feel free to ask questions about some of those use cases, but we have found that and documented that as part of the dual stack RFC. It is important for administrators to understand that a layered approach should be done to shape and control traffic within your environment. Things such as setting up your cloud or your on-prem configuration, your routers, your VPCs, those need to be done and secured. Other recommendations that I have are to run your gateway pods on nodes dedicated for gateway traffic. That way you can closely monitor ingress and egress gateway information 
as it is communicated to and from your cluster. Another recommendation that I have for users is to use a network plugin that supports Kubernetes network policy objects. Using this in combination with the other things I mentioned, you are able to, again, even finally limit ingress and egress traffic within your Kubernetes environments. Another setting that I recommend users change is to change the default outbound traffic policy mode from allow any to registry only. This will help you monitor external traffic from workloads within your service mesh to external services such as S3 or Dropbox. This can, however, be a breaking change. If enabled, traffic will fail from those workloads until a service entry is created to allow and permit that traffic. However, I do want to stress, this is not a security setting. This is to help you understand how your service mesh is interacting, but it is not meant to act as a firewall. For those, please see the network policy and how your VPC is configured within your environment. As I talked about earlier, there are a couple of automatic settings that I would recommend some users consider disabling. The first one being auto MTLS. Let's be explicit rather than be implicit about how our systems are working. The other thing that I recommend for end users is to disable protocol sniffing. Aspen Mesh wrote a blog a few years back detailing some of the issues that may arise with protocol sniffing. I also know that there are other vendors that recommend disabling this feature as well. However, if you do disable the protocol sniffing feature, you may experience an outage. Please research and understand why this can happen. It is typically related to the name of your ports and the prefixes that Istio requires it to have in order to properly give you information about those connections. Besides configuration settings, there are other things that you can do to harden your Istio service mesh within your environment. I strongly recommend that users evaluate the Istio CNI plugin. There are numerous reasons for this that can be found within the Istio drive. And as far as why this, this can potentially be a security issue for many companies. Another recommendation that I strongly recommend is people use distroless images. Istio does not provide rolling upgrades for currently distributed versions of Istio. Istio versions such as 1.12.6 do not get updated until 1.12.7 is released. The product security group frequently gets emails saying that there are vulnerabilities within our Docker image images. This is not the case. Istio is not vulnerable to those kinds of things. But we understand that security scanners routinely will inform you that various images you have need to be fixed. By reducing the attack service and using a distroless image, you will reduce some of that noise that routinely happens most likely within your environment. The other thing that I do want to make clear is that you know, please keep up to date. As a member of the product security group, we do routinely release CVE releases. Please go to the link on the slide to find out if the version of Istio you are running in production is vulnerable to any known CVE, as well as follow the RSS feed that is found on the Istio website for new Istio releases. A major part of the security best practices talks about request authentication and authorization policy resources. This is a very complicated issue and it's too hard to discuss in a 10 minute lightning talk. Please refer to that documentation, read it over, test things within your environment and understand 
how these both work in concert with one another before deploying them. An improperly deployed request authentication without a matching authorization policy can actually lead to a security bypass within your environment. Thank you very much. Your security is important to us.